wanted to show off the new uh, walking shirt that I ordered from Walmart. I ordered a pair. And this one I have to tuck in or it looks really stupid, but it, it's working out. I look attractive though when I show my waist because I'm a soft classic. This is my typical walking outfit. These are my New Balance shoes. I wear those when I walk. This morning it was crazy out there. Those Jesuits are nervous about something. I mean, it was like 6.45 in the morning or 7 in the morning and every car from when I crossed the street, three cars out of nowhere showed up and I and they were zooming around me, and then everywhere I went, I was bumping into Jesuits left and right. It's normally really quiet, but they are nervous about something. I'm definitely on their radar. I'm not a paranoid man. I, did, I don't take pictures of them because I want to get my work out, and if I have to stop to take pictures, you know, it ruins everything. And besides, I just, they're crazy. They're, they're, they're fanatics, man. So I think because I made that video, uh, giving Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey some support. I think he's come to our side and they don't like that. Apparently, I hear brain to brain that he's allowed Brent, the real Brent Spiner to get his Twitter back, but that I won't see that. In other words, did Zach Knight using his clone versions of the internet so that I see the, the uh, evil Brent Spiner clones version of Twitter, but the rest of the world is seeing the real Brent's Twitter if that's the case, I can see why they're there. And I hear Brent is calling me his wife at Twitter and everything. It may not be true, though, because brain to brain can be inaccurate. But judging by how nervous the Jesuits were today when I went for my walk, it's very possible. Anyways, I just wanted to show you this. I am going to be 60. This is no makeup. This is how I wear my hair when I go for my walk. And I wear my glasses and I have, I have tinted um, prescription lens, which means when I go outside, it automatically turns into sunglasses. I think they call them. I forget what they call this kind of glasses transition or something. Anyways, um, isn't this cute? This, even though I, I, I'm cooler with the looser top, I actually look more attractive when I am. Um, and I got my chia seeds, my ground flax seeds, and my um, and my peanut. I'm at yeah, I so I have peanuts and. Uh, Oh, oh, pit pumpkin seeds, and I had them all last night. And uh, I am, I, I lost a couple pounds, but I seem to be stuck at 130. But I've noticed something. My bone structure is bored. I, I was definitely small frame. I've, I'm adding bone, which is good because I'm six, almost 61. I will be 61 September 15th, but that's like a month from now. So I'm, I'm actually now medium, medium frame, almost small frame. So 130 pounds for medium frame, which is what I am now, is not bad. And I'm probably also developing muscle because I average about an hour and a half of walking, or the, about the equivalent of an hour and a half of walking a day. So you do, and I've been doing it now for about almost a year. So it's uh, I've developed definitely developed some muscle. Anyways, this is what I look like now at 60, almost 61. Um, you, you know what my face looks like. The wrinkles are starting to come in, and I do my facelift exercises, and they help. But anyways, this is a shirt that I ordered from Walmart, and um, I just wanted to let everybody see it. Uh, it's a medium. I. Um, it looks cute on me, huh? So, um, my measurements are 38, 29, 38. If I suck my gut in, I can go to 27. But I, the reason I like to take my measurements is because that's a more accurate barometer of how I'm doing as far as losing my, or my weight or whether my fitness and eating plan is working than the scale right now. Of course, I have an old scale, but... Um, I think the more accurate barometer is measurements because I exercise a lot and I'm building bones, so may, maybe it's not good for me to go below 130. I don't know. I'm five six and a half. Almost, I was five seven in my 20s. Now that I'm almost, almost 61, I've lost some height, and that happens to people as they get older. They think they lose, I guess, the spaces in their joints, and they kind of shrink down in their height. So, um, so. He, isn't this a cute outfit though? It looks good on me. I was trying to get something that would be the soft classic personality, which is what I am. And what I do when I try to see what will look good on me is I'll study Audrey Hepburn, not Audrey Hepburn, 
um, Grace Kelly and see what looks good on her because I'm, I'm actually a blend between a pure classic and a soft classic, which means I could dress either way and look good. And this is like, this is almost, this is like a classic clothing personality. As you can see, it looks good. Um, so if anybody wants to buy me clothes, go study Grace Kelly and see what looks good on her, and that will look good on me. She was a classic. You say, what's a classic? A classic is a woman who's medium everything. She doesn't have any extremes, and therefore her clothes basically should show off her face and her figure. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. It's like, um, it's like elegant simplicity might be a good way to put it. <laughs> Something like that. I forgot to mention YouTube denied my appeal. So they gave me a, my first strike for a seven-year-old video where I was talking about my mother and how Zach Knight was trying to seduce her. And they said that was bullying. Uh, it would, but it actually happened. I guess it doesn't matter. If you tell the truth and it might embarrass somebody, then, then that's bullying. My mother's, um, I don't know what's going on there. Um, that, is, that was seven years ago, and now all of a sudden they're worried about it. Yeah, he was at that time trying to seduce her, by the way, but anyways. <laughs> uh, and so that strike was about, that was three months ago. And then they just gave me one on August the 5th for a video where I'm advertising my movie Brent Spiner's Rape, and they said that one was spam. Spam. Because I advertised it more than once, I guess. You know, their guidelines are very arbitrary, and they keep changing them. So basically what it boils down to is they are censoring people they don't like. It has n nothing to do with a consistent set of rules. They don't have a consistent set of rules. So because I got two strikes within a three-month period, and they the second strike came just in time to be in that three-month window, because my first strike was going to expire on August the 8th, so that they made sure to give me a second strike on August the 5th. And I think the reason they did this is they didn't want me to be able to post any videos to stick up for Alex Jones, because they knew that I liked to watch him. At my website, I have his RSS feed, and so that people can go to my website and get the latest news from Alex Jones. And you can check on, if you go to my website, I'll have a link for that. I'll have a link for the RSS feed page for Alex Jones underneath this video. So they just don't like it that I, they, they want all, they wanted all the supporters to be off. And then I discovered the amazing atheist got knocked off of Twitter. I don't know what to make of that one. Then Twitter knocked off. Twitter knocked off the Amazing Atheist, uh, Brent, Brent Spiner MD Twitter, and Zach Knight's Twitter, which is at Zach Knight 69. But they're keeping me up. I, they, they did send me a notice about two weeks ago stating they got, Twitter did, that they got a complaint about me and that they decided that they, it would not affect my Twitter account at all. They decided not to do anything about it. And it was in regard to a tweet where I, Somebody was had tw tweeted to me and asked what to do, I think, about going to a Brent Sp uh, convention where Brent Spine would appear. And I told them not to give Brent any attention because he, he's a narcissist and he deserves it. He doesn't deserve any attention. It just, it just feeds his narcissism or something to that effect. And Twitter, and I recommended that they not go to the convention or something like that. I can't remember. And then I mentioned that... Um, the son, Lori McBride's son, Jackson, who was actually conceived through artificial insemination using um, semen that the Jesuits obtained through Lori's rape of Brent in 1992. They've got this wild, horrible, evil technology. So that Twitter didn't seem to have a problem with that. I think, I don't know, I'm not sure what to make of Jack Dorsey, but I respect him for not taking Alex Jones down, and I let him know that I even made a video, as you all know. Boy, when I went on my walk this morning, one of the bicyclists was, I was turning a corner, he just zoomed out of nowhere and just went right by me. Those, you know, you can always tell when you're dealing with Jesuit agents because they're very fast and furious and frenzied and they behave like a bunch of obsessive compulsive, um, obsessive compulsive fanatics. And they, uh, 
when things aren't going their way, they get vicious, vile, and deadly. And, uh, and we definitely need to stand up to them. And they are trying to take down everybody's freedom of speech who won't be a Lori McBride cuck. They, that's basically it. And, um, and if, you, if you won't go along with their lies, and the, the lie is that Brent, the truth is Brent Spiner has never wanted, the real Brent Spiner has never wanted you, Lori McBride. You may say, well, you said that we're gonna have, we had a major victory in July. I think we did. But what happened was um, we had a major military victory, but I believe right now that George Soros is in charge of the Jesuit order. And I hear brain to brain, he started an army of automatons. They're like half human, half robot. And he thinks that's the best way to defeat my Gale Shield, because I hear my Gale Shield was uh, taken out, some of the Lori McBride Jesuits. And so they're, we're dealing with an automaton robot army and at, the, at Brent Spiner's Twitter, for instance, the automaton has been making tweets. And I believe that there was one Star Trek convention in August where, that was in Las Vegas where the real Brent appeared. And I think the Brent Spiner automaton went to a Tampa um, Comic-Con, I think it was, where the automaton appeared. So we don't have this situation, the evil Jesuits lick Jed. And I believe their new leader is George Soros. So when I'm hearing brain to brain, I, I may make a corrective video later, but I'm just letting you know the, uh, the harassment, the bullying, the intimidation, it's still going on. They're still trying to shut up those who, who are independent spirits and who, who can think for themselves and who don't wanna be the uh, part of the group think and, uh, you know. The, have you noticed that everybody who follows the, the uh, Lori McBride Jesuits or the George Soros Jesuits, they all think and say the same thing? It's like, it's like they all parrot each other. They don't have their own mind. It's like they're all following directives from their leader. They don't have any autonomy. It's really spooky and scary when you think about it. And I really believe that if not for me and my Gale Shield, we would probably be already in the seven year tribulation. I think my Gale Shield is kind of holding that off and it's giving Jesus a, time, a chance to reach more people before the rapture happens and um, the tribulation sets in. 